The John LeBanc Show has been known to make people laugh, sing, think, scream, throw things in rage, and generally lose their minds. Listener discretion is advised. This is a special presentation of the John LeBanc Show. The invaders from Alien X. Resistance is too time. We've arrived at Sector Hexad 66. We've surveyed the system, and the third planet fits all of our needs. It is inhabited by various carbon-based life, with the race of humanoids being the dominant species. What is their defensive capabilities? Quite formidable, if they were a united species. But they are divided into factions and are in constant war with each other. How do you plan to proceed? Their technology is based on a very primitive form of power transfer. An electromagnetic pulse from our solar burst deflector will disable their power and communications long enough for us to grab a foothold and wait for your arrival. Excellent. Prepare your forces, Lord Knight. As you wish. You may fire when ready, Commander. Commence primary ignition. How peaceful it looks. signal seems to be coming from... Oh my god! Where's my keys? How do you tell the world that they're going to be invaded? <laughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I have a very important announcement. The Earth is about to have some company. Aliens are on their way, and they're coming to suck your brains out through your ears. Yeah, that'll go over well. Might as well throw me in the nut house with Photo Helix. Screw you, old man! You're about to have a rude awakening! I'd like to see him call me the motherfucker when the aliens are probing his ass with their laser beam x-rays. Damn it, Jim. I need a doctor, not a proctologist. <laughs> I mean, it's probably better that the human race is going to get wiped out by some aliens. We're just a bunch of morons anyways. You can find that out by spending 20 minutes on Grashin and Seven Mile. Yep, we're doomed. Better call in the fat lady. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> Almost killed a fat lady. Though I might have saved her from being Earthling Sushi for the aliens if I had. <laughs> Man, she'd probably feed the whole invasion force too, with leftovers. You know, I've been saying it for years. Yes, I've been saying it for years. The aliens are coming, and nobody believed me. How come I'm always right about the bad shit? I'm never right when it comes to the lottery, or women. I'm constantly wrong on those. But when the aliens are coming to suck our brains out, I'm right, no fig. What a thing to be remembered for. You know, Uncle Bobby, 
You need to make sure you have your underwear on the next time you go sit on the porch. Old Lady Hicks next door is getting an eyeful. Uh, I can't help it. You know, sometimes you just got to air it out. Well, I understand that. But now she keeps asking me all kinds of questions. Uh, what kind of questions? Old things like, how's your heart? And when are you going to be home alone? Ah, well, we could never resist me. Well, just do me a favor and wear some damn underwear, please. Hello? Hey, Wilbur, get your gear and get to the bar. Hello? Y'all? Hello? Hmm. Let me turn on the radio real quick, Uncle Bobby. What for? Well, just, just hang on. Talk about the uh, UFO thing again. Come on down to sh- This is an alert of the emergency broadcasting system. An alert has been issued for all parts of Hazard Capital. What's wrong? Uncle Bobby, where'd you put the keys to this pickup truck? Why? Are you going on a trip? Yep. And you're coming along. Hi, Mr. Hillbilly. You know, Leroy, I just love sci-fi movies. Me too, Uncle Shady. You know, when I was younger, I used to pretend I was Han Solo. I did, mm-hmm. And I always made my cousin Winnie play with me, and she was Chewbacca. Why Chewbacca, Uncle Shady? Well, she was an ugly thing. Okay, Uncle Shady, it's starting, so shh. Sh- sh- okay, all right, jeez. You know, when you get my age, you have to talk about things, because if you don't, you might just forget them. This always happens during the best part. The power's dead. Yeah? Now, how'd you figure that one out? Well, all the power's off, Uncle Shady. Boy, sometimes your genius amazes me. Well, I wonder what the emergency was. Uh, I don't know. Probably another plane crash or Ebola or some damn shit going on. Now, what the hell is going on out there? Hey, Leroy. Come here and look at this. Uncle Shady, they're looting. Didn't take them long now, didn't it? The power goes off and the savages are on the loose. You better go lock up the back door and I'll get my guns. Okay, Uncle Shady. And when you come back, bring me another beer. Dumbest people in the world live around here. Poor people burning down and ripping off poor people. Makes no sense. Okay, the back door is locked and bolted, Uncle Shady. And here's your beer. But you really think you should be drinking at this time? Why not? It's always a good time to be drinking. And with the power out, they're going to go warm anyways. Now let's go watch some action. You want to go out there, Uncle Shady? Well, it'll give us something to do. But there's... What, you scared? Well, yeah, Uncle Shady. The people around here are crazy. Leroy, you ain't got nothing to worry about. I've got my gun with me, and I can shoot the schmeckle off a flea at 200 yards. Well, if you say so, Uncle Shady. Just think of it this way. It'll be like watching Wild Kingdom in 3D. Wild Kingdom? What's that, Uncle Shady? You know, boy, you really need to start watching some more TV. Come on before we miss all the action. This is a special presentation of the Jack Lorraine Show. The Invaders from Alien X. Resistance is futile. this working i'm sorry sir our credit card machine isn't working at this time we are only accepting cash at the moment okay well give me twenty dollars on this pump and i'll bring you in the cash i'm sorry sir you must pay before you pump <sighs> for pete's sakes can you turn on the pump and i'll bring you the money while it's pumping i'm sorry sir but you must remain in visual sight of the gas pump while it's pumping 
Okay, okay, I'm coming in. Abu, that's you? Oh, hello, John. I thought that voice sounded familiar. How can I help you today? Well, I'm trying to get 20 bucks in gas, Abu. Oh, yes, I remember now. Oh, my. Um, well, I'm sorry, but we no longer have any power, so I won't be able to sell you any gas, John. Well, I gathered that. Can you hang on a moment? I need to call my cousin and tell him we have no power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, this is funny. My phone is not working at all. Huh. Neither's mine. Be right back. Where are you going? Stop! Stop! Damn! It must have been an EMP. Hey, John! Hey, John! Well, you know, we are supposed to report any suspicious activity, and you running out of the store was very suspicious. But since you are my friend, I'm going to let you off with just a warning, but in the future, just remember, no running in or out of the store, please. Abu, don't you know what's happening? Yes, we have no power, and you ran out of the store suspiciously. Abu, your phone isn't working either. And my car doesn't work. It's obvious. We were hit with an EMP. Oh, I love that group. Yes, homies. Homies. Abu, not ICP, but EMP, electromagnetic pulse. Who are they? I have never heard of that band. Abu, it's not a band. It's what just happened. We're... What do you mean? It's like a bomb that knocks out electronics, Abu. That's why nothing's working. Well, I did not hear anything from my brothers about such an event coming. I don't think this one is terrestrial, Abu. What? Do you mean like aliens or something? Yeah, and not the ones from Tijuana. You mean fr from outer space? That's exactly what I'm saying, Abu. You know, I don't like aliens. They make me very scared. Little green men with no hair that run around abducting people really creep me out. We can't waste time here. This ain't good. Okay, think, John. Think, think, think. Abu, grab as much as you can carry and lock up the store. Well, John, that is against company policy. What? Well, John, it's against company policy to steal or to leave the station unattended. In a few hours, nobody's going to care about any of that, Abu. You mean they're coming here? Yeah, and hurry up. Okay, okay, I'll be back. Don't leave without me. Man, we don't have much time, and it's still a hike from here, and I'm a little pale to be running around in this neighborhood at this time of night. Oh, and I sure hope Wilbur got the message. Damn it, what's taking him so long? Come on, Abu, or you're gonna be a permanent resident! Seventy-two percent of population centers have been affected by the electromagnet pulse. How long before completion? The pulse wave will achieve 100 percent efficiency on schedule. Prepare your strike drones for surface attack. Acknowledged. Yet another world I conquer. One hundred percent efficiency has been achieved. All too easy. The strike drones are ready to be deployed. Execute. Confirmed. Deploying strike drones. The Ethereum commands you to make contact with him. Move the ship away from the moon so that we can send a clear transmission. Acknowledge. Deployment at 13%.
Breaking thrusters fired, Captain. Mr. Tucock, when are we? It appears we are in the early 21st century, Captain. Good work, everyone. Tap into the planetary communications. Aye, Captain. Mr. Dwarf, find us a quiet place on Earth to land. I see it. Report. Dear Captain, it has two moons. On screen. Mr. Tucock, what do you make of it? Scanning. This is illogical. Captain, sensors indicate that that's no moon. It's a space station. Captain, I'm picking up no transmission coming from the planet, sir. Captain, several small craft have exited the station. Heading for the planet, sir. On screen. Mr. Chang, magnify. Mr. Tucock, what are they? Unknown, Captain. The readings are very curious. Explain. They are cylinder pods that are intelligently guided, but there appears to be no life form readings aboard any of them, Captain. How many of them are there? 24,902 to be precise, Captain. It's an invasion. Mr. Chang, lay in an intercept course. Course plotted, sir. Mr. Chewy, engage at best possible speed. So much for the tuna. All hands, this is the Captain. Battle stations. <laughs> Cream. It's too late to turn back now. Oh, that's a damn shame. You're gonna regret forgetting it. How am I gonna regret forgetting it? When the itching starts, so the bitchin'. Uh, just stick some wet TP up there and you'll be fine. So where are we headed anyways? Well, you know all those times I was hunting? Boy, you can't call that hunting. You ain't killed anything yet. Well, I wasn't hunting. I was training. For what? The sissy parade? Listen, Uncle Bobby, I'm part of a top-secret militia. Right, boy, don't be blowing up any government buildings with me in the car. I'm too old to go to jail. It's not like that, Uncle Bobby. And too fragile. Listen, stop worrying. It's not like that at all. So where are we going anyways? We're headed to Detroit. Why the hell are you going there? Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you, Uncle Bobby. We're heading to the bunker. Uh, the bunker? That's what we call our meeting place. Uh, and you meet in secret? Yep. Uh, boy, you haven't turned into some sissy now, have you? Trust me, you'll understand when we get there. Uh, well, you better hurry, because I'm feeling the movement coming on. We'll clinch up, because we have plenty of miles yet to go. Uh, it's going to be a long drive. You know, Leroy, I bet you ten bucks old man Redneck's house burns down before the Mini Mart does. I'll take that bet, Uncle Shady. The Mini Mart's been burning for ten minutes longer. Easy money. You think so, huh? It's like taking candy from a baby. <laughs> See? I told you. I just don't understand it, Uncle Shady. Well, you're just stupid, that's all. Everything flammable was stolen out of the Mini Mart. The whiskey, the gin. Hell, we even seen the drunk guy make off with the Mother's Day card rack filled with Mother's Day cards. There's nothing left to burn. But old man Redneck's house? That was a false flag waiting to happen. What do you mean, Uncle Shady? He's got more firepower than the Pentagon. I never noticed. Boy, what are you doing in your room then when you're looking over there through your binoculars? My binoculars? I saw you the other day when I was getting the mail. Standing there in the window looking through those damn things? Uh, well... I figured you were keeping tabs on the old man. Making sure he wasn't doing anything suspicious. You know, we don't want another Ruby Ridge in this neighborhood. No, it's nothing like that, Uncle Shady. Well, what the hell were you doing then? Well, you see, Uncle Shady... Don't tell me you were looking at his wife. Well, as a matter of fact... And please don't tell me she was naked. Okay, I won't tell you she was naked then. Jesus, Leroy! You know how lucky you are? You mean if old man Redneck found out? No, you could have gone blind. Better men than you have lost their eyesight looking at ugly naked women. She's not that bad, Uncle Shady. Boy, she looks like the love child Excuse of Nancy me. Pelosi and Godzilla. E Excuse me. Now what the hell do you want? I was wondering if you could spare something to drink. Well, maybe. 
First, let me ask you something. You still got some of those Mother's Day cards handy? I sure do. Uncle Shady, what are you doing? Just hang on, Leroy. It's times like these that make me think of your grandmother. I've got two with me right now. Well, let me see what you got. Okay, here's here's one. Uh, let me see this. Uh, Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you so much. Thanks for everything you've given me and will give me. You will never know how much I love you. Oh, that's a nice one, Uncle Shady. Well, it's just a little too sappy for me. Let me see the other one. Okay, here you go. Now, let me see. Uh, to Mom, your backseat romp with Dad that night turned your belly into a massive sight. Nine months later and weighing 12 pounds, I was born to the best mommy around. Happy Mother's Day. I'll trade you the rest of my beer for this card. It's a deal. Okay, here you go then. Oh, thank you very much. It's a party. I can't believe you just traded it's a beer a for a card, Uncle Shady. Well, Mother's Day is coming up. And besides, it was all backwash. Now go grab me another beer. Okay, Uncle Shady. You are listening to a special broadcast of the John Bang Show. The Invaders from Alien X. Resistance is futile. Abu, over here. Wait for me, John. Damn it, Abu, you need to pick up the pace. I'm doing the best I can. Well, if you weren't wearing a dress and sandals, you might be able to keep up. This is not a dress, John. It's an abia, a customary outfit in my country. Well, it's slowing us down. Well, it's not made for running, John. Is it made for climbing? Why do you ask? Because if we stay here much longer, those guys chasing us, they're eventually going to find us here. But you still have not told me where are we going? We're heading to the bunker. What is that? It's a safe place that only a few people know about. Well, how much further is it? The corn on my toe is acting up something fierce. Not much further. Oh, shit. What? It might be a good time to find out if that dress is made for climbing. Oh, no. Wait. Help. I'm stuck. I'm stuck, John. Help. Help. Damn it, Abu. Help. I need to push. I think it's safe to say that this is not made for climbing. Yes, I would agree. Uh, if I get but killed hurry, in the middle hurry, of the Detroit, hurry, I'm hurry, never going to speak hurry. to you again. Look at what you find here in the big city. Get down off of there. Now, where do you think you're going? Yeah, where do you think you be going? Don't you know you be trespassing, man? Or I'm very sorry. I was only following him. Nice, Abu. Nice. What? You's got to pay tributes to walk these streets. Yeah, you's got to pay tributes. We gonna fuck you up. Now, you boys wouldn't be up to no good now, would you? Go back in your house, old man. This is none of your business. Yeah, this is none of your business, old man. You might get hurt. Well, you see, here's the problem. I am home. And this here is my friend. So I'm making it my business. Now, why don't you three shit for brains take your saggy ass pants and your bad grammar out of here before my trigger finger has a muscle spasm? Take your best shot, you blind ass motherfucker! Ah. Anybody oh. else wanna oh. live? You shut up my finger toe! Look, oh. we don't want no trouble. Yeah, we ain't oh. looking for trouble! Then you better move along if you know what I mean. Oh. And take this nine toe limping piece of trash with you. So, 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 so we're just gonna get out of here. Yeah, we're gonna. Thanks, Shady. Ain't no thing. But you know better to be down here at night. I had no choice, Shady. And what are you looking at? Oh, well, nothing. Good, because I'm in no mood to put up with your bullshit either. Man, where is Leroy with oh, that Shady, beer? I've got your beer. Where are you, Uncle Shady? Uncle Shady! I'm over here, damn it! Shady, we have to talk. Here's your beer, Uncle Shady. About <laughs> damn time. What the hell took you so long? Well, I was trying to find a cold one for you, Uncle Shady. Well, while you were putzing around, I was doing my best Dirty Harry and saving the day. Listen, we have to get out of here. You should hang out until morning. It isn't safe for a guy like you right now. 
Not to mention running around with a fairy. I'm not a fairy. Yeah, right. And I'm Dirty Excuse Harry. Excuse me. We can't stay could here. Could I please have a little glass of water? Water's dead. But we've got plenty of warm beer. Oh, okay. A beer does sound good. What kind do you have? Well, we've got warm spiller, Mason Triple X, and some LeBang Blue Balls. Give him one of those camel jockeys. Hey, Uncle Shady. What's that in the sky? You know, that's a good question. It's sure moving fast. It looks like a shooting star. And it's heading right for us. Um, Uncle Shady, shouldn't we start running or something? Where do you suggest? I don't know where it's gonna hit, do you? Well, no. Then why run? You're better off just watching the show. This is a once in a lifetime kind of thing going on. But I'm scared, Uncle Shady. Well, close your eyes if you're scared. It'll be over in a minute. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. You know, I wonder if I have time to take a leak. You're worried about that at a time like this? Now listen here, I've already had a 12 pack, and I don't want peeing on myself to be the last thing I did on earth. Get down! <laughs> Is everyone okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I guess so. Well, I'm not. I just spilled my full beer. I have a bad feeling about this. Run! As you wish. What is it? We have a vessel approaching. From the planet? Negative. Configuration and origin unknown. Well then, our first cat of the day. Let's meet them halfway. Plot and intercept course. Acknowledged. Bobby, I've got to make a quick detour. That's good because I'm prairie dogging something fierce. Well, there's no toilet at this place. Are there bushes and trees? Yep, it's got plenty of those. Well, that's close enough. It wouldn't be the first time I had to drop a noose in the bush. When I was shot down in Korea, I parachuted into a wooded area and had no choice but to do my business right there. Now wait a minute, Uncle Bobby. I thought you told me your parachute got stuck in a tree, and that's how you got captured. Well, how do you think they found me? I'd been sitting there for 13 hours, and my last meal was cabbage soup. I had no choice but to let her rip, and since I was downwind, it let him right to me. Well, I can see why you left that out of the story. I haven't been able to eat cabbage soup since. Okay, we're here. I'll be right back. Take your time. I'm going to find a nice quiet bush. Now this looks comfy. Now it's around here somewhere. Yep, X marks the spot. Hey, hey, Wilbur. I forgot to grab some teepee. Can you bring me a roll? In a minute, Uncle Bobby. You better hurry. It's getting messy. Just hang on. Bobby, it's time to go. Maybe some TV. We ain't got time. Now let's go. Damn it. Damn it. 
this really takes a cake. A man can't drop a noose in privacy anymore. What's happened to my country? It is dead. I'm coming. Everything is just rust, rust, rust with you, ain't it? What, 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 You didn't happen to bring an extra pair of my drawers now, did you? Nope. Why? Well, you didn't bring me any teepee, so I had to use something. Well, I guess you're gonna have to go commando until we find you so. That's okay. Just call me Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh. Jim, did I hear right? What's that, Hattie? You're gonna intervene in an event in this timeline? You could say that, yes. Damn it, Jim. That's against everything you stand for. It's wrong, and it's crazy. Doctor, you must learn to control your emotions. They will be your undoing. The events that are happening are not recorded in any of the history logs. Jim, I'm an old country doctor. What the hell is this green-blooded mutant saying? Hattie, we're just as confused as you are. Nowhere in the history logs is there evidence the Earth was ever invaded. It's all rather fascinating. So what are you saying? This never happened? That's exactly what I'm saying. Well, that's crazy. How can something that never happened be happening then? That's what we're trying to figure out, Hattie. Only two logical answers are left. Well, give me the bad news. It appears that our presence has either altered this timeline or we've entered an alternate reality. So what are you trying to say? Hattie, we might never be able to return to our timeline or reality. Go ahead. Captain, a vessel is now moving to intercept us. On my way. Gentlemen, time to go to work. I told you this was a bad idea. Look at it this way, Hattie. It might be your big chance to get away from it all. This ain't exactly what I had in mind. Captain on the bridge. Report. The craft has altered speed and is closing. Contact, two minutes. Mr. Metadata, how long before communications range? 20 seconds, Captain. Mr. Chewy, decrease speed. <laughs> Mr. Dwarf, stand by to raise shields. Aye, Captain. Mr. Chang. Plot a parallel course. Course plotted, sir. Monty, it might be a good idea to boost power to the shields. Aye, Captain. Mr. Tucock, perform a discreet scan on the vessel. I want to know their defensive capabilities. Scanning? Coming into computer range now, sir. Open a channel. This is Captain James Picard of the United Empire Spaceship. You are in violation of galactic treaty. I demand that you cease all activities and withdraw. Jim. There's no galactic treaty in this time period. Well, I wanted to sound convinced. <laughs> no response, Captain. Captain, I am unable to ascertain the defensive capabilities of the alien craft. Sensor readings indicate minimal life aboard. Captain, we have a message coming in. On screen. We are the Sordos. Resistance is futile. Transmission ended, Captain. Well then, what do you suggest now, Captain, sir? Mr. Metadata, open a channel. I repeat. This is Captain James Picard of the United Empire of Earth. Withdraw from this sector or I will be forced to take stronger measures. No response, Captain. Okay, we're gonna do this the hard way. Raise shields. Captain, I'm getting a strange reading from the enemy vessel. Report! They have locked on a tractor beam, Captain. Captain, the beam is draining our shields. Confirm. The shields will be down in 18 seconds. Locate the source of the tractor beam and lock phases. Phases locked, Captain. Fire. They still have us. Shields down, Captain. A type of beam is slicing into the hull. They're carving us up like a 20th century surgeon. Use whatever force necessary to terminate that beam. Fire when ready. Again, Mr. Dwarf. Tractor being released. Force fields are maintaining our whole integrity. Monty, damage report. I'm still sorting out the damage, Captain. But there is no way I can get the shields back up. All sections report no casualties, Captain. Wrong. There are casualties, Captain. My wits. Captain, we are being scanned. I see it. Report. Several craft have exited the station and are heading this way, sir. Mr. Tukov, scanning. 
It appears to be an attack squadron. Closing fast. Monty, I need those shields. No way possible, Captain! Mr. Dewey, evasive pattern, Nimoy Alpha. Captain, a large cylinder-shaped vessel has also exited the station and has joined the pursuit. Options, there is the asteroid belt at heading 832, Mark 6. Lay in that heading and engage. Stay down, guys. Not much further, man. This rain is messing up my head. Not far. Just beyond the fence. You mean we're heading into the old airport? We're never going to make it. We'll just lay low until they leave. I sure wish I had a beer. Okay, come on. I hope you know what you're doing. The only thing I know for sure is that we've got to get from here to there without being noticed. That's impossible. It does seem pretty risky. Just stay calm, everybody. I'm so very scared. Keep it down. Looks like it's leaving. Hush, boy. Are they gone? <laughs> Just had to say something out there. Run! <laughs> been one hell of a night. How are things coming? You better ask the dude, man. Where is he? Oh, man, he's in the workshop, man. Any word from Wilbert? Not a peep, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can I ask you a question? Sure, man. What the hell is going on here? It looks like we're in a secret government facility. Well, it's not the government, Shady, but it sure is secret. At least we're out of the rain. Yes, I am so right down to my fruit of the looms. Want me to get downstairs, Tony? Fire up the radio and get those two some clean clothes. Way ahead of you, man. It'll be nice to be in some dry clothes. Yes, I am soaked to the bone. Things are crazy out there, man. We've picked up some strange signals that I'm still trying to figure out, man. What do you mean? Oh, man, you'll have to see it. Behold, gentlemen. Oh, my. The bunker. Uncle Shady, can you believe it? After what we lived through tonight, I can believe anything. My brothers would be so jealous of you, John. I'll be right back, man. Come on, guys. Let's get you some dry rags, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can you explain why everyone else in the world has no power, but this place is lit up like a Christmas tree? Well, the bunker is impervious to many things, Shady, including EMP damage. How did you get the funding for this? Oh, we have our ways. And here's the man behind all the technology developed here. Nerd Eye McGeek, meet my good friend Shady. Nice to meet you. Pleasure's all mine. So what's the download? As you know, the EMP knocked out all electronics and communications on the planet. Since the initial attack, thousands of what appear to be autonomous mechanized drones have landed across the globe and are now wreaking havoc. Yeah, we ran into a few of them. Shit, we almost got barbecued by one just a few minutes ago. I was unable to tap into the surveillance imagery. Due to the MP? That's correct. But the infrared is off the charts. Here. Jeez, that thing's big. Nearly one-tenth the size of the moon, to be precise. One-tenth? Has there been any military response? I am unable to determine that at this time. Nerdeye, what do you make of this anomaly next to the command ship? The data is inconclusive. Sure looks like a spacecraft to me. What else do you know at this point? Not much. Most of the data on the alien craft is preliminary. Without working satellites, I cannot give you anything concrete. Well, it looks like we're going to have to pay a visit to our new alien friends then. <laughs> That's a good one, John. That's a good one. Pay a visit. <laughs> we... 
What are you going to use to get there? A flying camel? Where are we at on the secret project? Oh, let me show you. Holy shit. As you can see, they're just about ready for testing. Hey, man, here's what I was talking about, man. Where's Abu? Oh, man, he couldn't figure out what to wear, man. So he's back in the locker room, man. Uncle Shady, you should see the kitchen. It's bigger than the Timmy Hose on grasses. Really? You know, I'm feeling kind of hungry. Did you run this data and compare it to the infrared? <laughs> yeah, man, and I still can't figure it out. Nerd Eye, how long before these are ready to take off? I'm not sure. A couple of hours, maybe. Even less if I had someone mechanically inclined to help. Yeah, we sure need Wilbert here. Hey, you know, you're in luck. Leroy here, he can make anything run. Well, thanks, Uncle Shady, but this might be a little out of my league. Just do what the guys say and you'll be fine. Okay, Uncle Shady. It's settled. Leroy, you help Nerd Eye and Stoney get these damn things running. And Shady, come with me. Where are we going? We're going to get you some food, and then we're going to make a phone call. After a brief encounter with the alien vessel, where our shields were drained by some kind of tractor beam energy ray never before seen, we are now being pursued by a baker's dozen of what appear to be small unmanned attack drones. A larger vessel that seems to have only one function, to destroy, is also in pursuit. We have dubbed it the Planet Killer. Report. Contact in 10 seconds. Mr. Dwarf. Arm torpedoes. Torpedoes arm, Captain. Steady. Now, Mr. Dwarf. Direct hit. Fire. Fire. Minor damage to deflector disc. Phasers, fire. Mr. Dwarf. Fire at will. 20 seconds, still asteroid field. You're not really going in there. They'd be crazy to follow us. Damn it, Jim. The possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1. Never tell me the odds. Captain, I'm picking up an energy buildup from the planet killer. What do you make of it? I surmise it's a weapon preparing to fire. Monty, status on those shields. It'd be easier if you'd make less bumps, Captain. I need a few more minutes! We don't have a few minutes. Too late. Direct hit. Hull breach on deck 21, section 17 through 20. 10 seconds to asteroid belt! Take us in, Mr. Chewie. Force field's in place and stable, Captain. Engineer Montgomery on the line, Captain. Go ahead, Monty. Captain, I got to take the mains offline! It's radiation! Understand, Engineer. Mr. Chang, find us a quiet little asteroid we can use for cover. Yes, Captain. Mr. Tukov, they are preparing to fire. Mr. Chang, find anything. Aye, Captain. Lay in a heading and engage. They're firing. Too late. You are listening to a special broadcast of the John LeBang Show. The Invaders from Alien. Resistance is your time. I need to use the little boy's room. Take a break, guys. Okay, man. Hey, man. The dude said take a break. I'm just going to keep working. I've got to keep my mind busy. Yeah, man. I understand. This whole thing's foobar, man. Foobar? What's that? Oh, man. That means fucked up beyond all reality, man. I heard it in a movie once, man. 
Well, you're right. It sure is foobar. Ha, <laughs> don't worry, man. Everything's going to be okay. I wish I had your optimism. We're in good hands here, man. These guys have been getting ready for a long time, man. How would anybody know something like this was going to happen? Because they pay attention, man. Pay attention to what? I thought this kind of stuff was only on TV in the movies. I never thought it was real. Hey, man. I thought they were crazy too, man. Building this bunker thing, man, in an old salt mine, man, under an old airport, man? In the middle of Detroit, man? What a waste of money, I thought, man. You know, how much pot could you buy with that kind of money? Yeah, well, it looks like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking pot. Hey, man, don't worry, I got some. Listen, the dude said take a break, man. Let's go to the ballroom, man. The ballroom? Yeah, man. This place is fully loaded, man. Come on, I'll show you, man. I hate to tell you this, Shady, but you reek, man. Yeah, I know. Thank God pissing on myself won't be the last thing I did on this earth. So what are you guys doing here anyways? Well, about a year ago, I came into possession of some very sensitive information. Something that could shake up the entire world order in such a manner as to forever change the future of mankind. Great. Do you have any beer around here? In the fridge. You don't have much of a selection, do you? Biller Genuine Crap and Gay Wiser, the queen of beers. Oh, tough decisions. I guess it's crap then. Better to have shit in the mouth than the other thing. So tell me more about this bullshit you were talking about. Well, these documents not only had the details of a future invasion of the Earth from an extraterrestrial threat, but it also had plans for an anti-gravity craft and that, combined with a so-called associate, we developed this facility and the three spacecraft you saw in the hangar. You got any chips around here or anything? In the cupboard. So what you're saying is, whoever created these so-called documents that you have knew that all this bullshit was going to happen? It could be just a contingency plan in case something like this ever did happen. But the technology is real, as you witnessed in the hangar. But do those things really work? Well, that's the catch. You haven't used them yet? Only the prototype. The other two haven't even been out of the hangar. Well, that's a pretty big catch. Anyways, I need your help. You need my help? What the hell can I do? We have to go up there and find a way onto whatever is up there. And hopefully find a way to stop them. Go up there? You mean out of space? Yep. Alright, just for argument's sake. So when you get up there, how the hell are you supposed to sneak onto whatever the hell is waiting for you? By the looks of their 20-foot killing machines, you're a little bit out of your league. And once they see that you're not one of their monstrosities flying at them, they're gonna zap your ass and then bye-bye your Sunday night evening radio show. We have one advantage. What's that? You're too dumb to know when you're over your head? We have a cloaking device. You mean like Star Trek? Pretty much. <laughs> you guys are killing me, man. So will you go with me? <laughs> what a night. I was hoping for a nice evening at home, drinking some beers and watching some good science fiction movie. And it turns out I'm living in a sci-fi reality. Hell, I must be dreaming. Why not? Here's to clean underwear. Now speaking of that, I really do need to change. Right. The locker room's right next door. So just go through there, and you should be able to find something to fit in. You look about my size. Yeah, but I've got a little more style. I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. Where are you headed? To make that phone call. <laughs> That's why I love you, man. Always kidding. <clears throat> you still looking, huh? Yes, I do not know what to wear. Well, do me a favor. Please don't wear another dress. I still can't get the image of you and your Fruit of the Looms exposed for the whole world to see when you were trying to climb over that fence out of my head. I'm lucky I wasn't killed by skid mark exposure. Oh, I'm sorry for that. It's been a crazy night. <laughs> You're telling me. 
I feel like I'm in some kind of weird Twilight Zone meets War of the Worlds nightmare. And Tom Cruise ain't nowhere to be found. What do you think of this? Uh, that might be a little risky for you. Maybe you should try something with a little less color. Hmm. Maybe you're right. This is all very new to me. I have always worn the same thing ever since I was a little camel. You mean you never wore pants in your life? Never. No wonder you're a fairy. Let me ask you something. How do you get any women wearing those clothes? Oh, that's very easy. After we capture a village, I get to choose my wife. Oh, I see. You do things the old school way. Well, that's cool and all, but you should really try to get with the times, my friend. Today's woman doesn't want to be told what to do. They don't? No. They want to be lied to. Tell them they're beautiful and you love them. Appeal to their emotions. Make them feel special. And then you've got them. What do you mean? Take me, for instance. I got ladies begging for my services. And what do I do? I lie. The bigger the lie, the harder it is to get rid of them. How about this one? Uh, that, no, no, no. That's, that's too much like Austin Powers. As I was saying. The only thing about lying too much is that when you finally tell them the truth, they won't believe you. Ain't that the truth? See? I don't think I understand. Well, sometimes you can over-ejaculate your lies to the point where the I love you's and the you're so beautiful's so much that she doesn't even hear the I don't want to see your ugly stupid face again. It's probably best you don't come back here. The area is contaminated. Well, thanks for the warning. What is your opinion on this? Now that's got style. I think I want that for myself. Well, you can't have it. I found it first. Now listen, you're not cool enough for that outfit. It needs someone with class to be wearing it. Well, if I wear it, I will be cool. You wouldn't be cool if your balls were frozen to a pool in an Antarctic blizzard. Now give me that. I found it first. I'm wearing it. The only thing you're going to be wearing is my fist. Are you threatening me? Damn right I'm threatening you. Now give me that. No, it's mine. Stay away. I know judo. I'll judo hey. your face, hey. you mouth hey. left hook. Stand still so I can catch you. Hey. Hey. You guys hey. keep it hey. keep... hey. You guys keep it down. Hey. It's hey. hard to concentrate. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, now what do we do? You want to flip for it? Hey, man, right this way, man. This is the coolest room I've ever seen. Aw, oh, thanks, man. I'm pretty proud of it, man. Each bong in here has a specific purpose, man. What do you mean? Like for different kinds of weed? Sorry, man. Where did you get all of these? Oh, the dude made them, man. You mean that goofy looking feller who seems to know everything? Yeah, man. He's like a genius or something, man. Take this bong, man. He calls it the smokestack, man. It's great for smoking out a room. Hey, I like this one. Me too, man. That's a transporter. Why is it called that? Because it takes you places, man. You mean it gives you a really good buzz? <laughs> that too, man. It's a teleportation device, man. A teleportation device? You'll have to ask the dude how it works, man. But it uses a method called bong travel, man. And you can go anywhere you want on the planet? Just about, man. It has only a few limitations, man. First, you have to know where you're going, man. Second, your weed needs to be strong enough, man. And most importantly, man, you've got to bring enough weed to make it home, man. Well, can we try it? Oh, sorry, man. I only use that for Christmas, man. Let's use this one. How's he doing, Hetty? Not good, Jim. He's got several broken bones, damage to half of his organs, and his vital signs are fading. I don't think he's gonna make it. He's strong, he'll make it. I wish I had your optimism. Captain, I'm picking up a signal coming from Earth. What kind of signal? Old Morris Code, sir. Are you sure? Positive, Captain. I'm on my way. Take care of him, Hattie. That's my job. Hang on, Tukuk, hang on. Well, don't you two look cute. You guys remind me of the Wonder Twins. Can you believe it? 
Matching right down to the fruit of the looms. It rides up a little bit in the crotch. Oh, that's normal, man. You're just not used to wearing pants. You'll get used to it. Did you make that phone call? Yep. Let's hope someone heard it. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Is this what a widgie feels like? Well, let's head over to the hangar then. All right, then. Is there any beer on this trip? It feels like it's going up my butt crack. Well, you can pick some up in the kitchen on the way. Good, because there's no way I'm going up into space sober. Where are we going? Well, I'm going to step in here and grab some beers. I don't know what you're doing. I'll be right back. I wouldn't go in there for a while. It's just too toxic. Get Banger 1 fired up. No problem. He's a very smart man, isn't he? That he is, Abu. All right. You ready? I guess so. All there was left was the lousy gaywisers. That's not a good sign. <coughs> so nasty. I had a woman like this once. Well, when we get back, I'll send Stoney out to get you some real beer. <laughs> ah, very funny, John. Very funny. Uncle Shady, this place has everything. Well, not everything, Leroy. It sure lacks some good quality beer. Hey, man. You all ready? Yeah. You think you can hold the fort down while I'm gone? Oh, don't worry, man. I'll keep things together, man. Until the big guy shows up, anyways. It's a bit itchy, too. Yeah, let's hope he does. We sure could use him right now. Here, man. Just in case. Now listen, Leroy. I've got something important to do. You just hang here and help the fellas out get these things working. From what I hear, we're really gonna need them. Almost like little ants crawling all around. Where are you going, Uncle Shady? We need to take care of some business. Maybe I should put some lotion on it. It won't take long. But Uncle Shady... I want to go with you. I know you do, boy, but you're needed here. But Uncle Shady... Trust me, everything's going to be all right. It's just... Hey, when did I ever bullshit you? Come here, boy. I love you, boy. I love you too, Uncle Shady. Now wipe those tears off your eyes before someone calls you a sissy. All aboard. It's time to kick some alien ass. Cloaking device operational on off-flight modes. Thanks, Nerdeye. Good luck. Gentlemen... Have a seat. I'm riding shotgun. What does that mean? It means I'm sitting up here. And why did he wish us good luck? Well, there's something we've got to do. Well, Danny, if it's okay with you, I'm just going to sit here for a while. Hey, John, is it okay if he sits there? He can sit wherever he wants. See, I told you. Antimatter booster engaged. Oh, that's good. I am so exhausted. It has just been way too much excitement for me today. Strap yourself in, because you're about to have a little more excitement. What? Sometimes you don't know your destiny until it smacks you right in the face. We'll try to save as many as we can, but it likely won't be everyone. We've got only one shot at this. Then we'd better make it a good one. Oh, I told you not to pull the lever so hard. I have a bad feeling about this. Leroy, get back. Now everybody get out of here. Not you again. Mr. Dwarf, fire! Come to Dark Side, you are. Save me, Abu! I work again! Scabby. Better buckle up. It's working! Hit it! Damn it, Jim. I told you not to mess with the space-time continuum. Destiny Wars. <laughs> Meet your destiny on New Year's Eve. Dillbag.com Ladies, it doesn't matter if it's morning, noon, or night. Whether you've worked all day or you just woke up. If you've got the thirst, just wet your lips on a BJ. BJ Beer, brewed right here in the great state of Michigan. Who wants a BJ? Oh, 